below. I'm going to create this quick tutorial here to demonstrate how to do a very common little thing in Illustrator that has constantly been tripping me up, but that I finally solved and figured out a quick way to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and show you where I was and the situation I found myself facing. So here I've got this nice owl illustration that I've done for a client. As you can see, it's composed of many overlapping shapes and strokes. This is a stroke. You know, this is another kind of stroke. And then, deeply layered, all these shapes have all these different kinds of strokes here. So my goal was going to be to knock out the strokes. That's the real thing. I've seen, I've seen numerous articles out there people searching for how to knock out the strokes. So what if I want to take this owl and reduce it to only having these black shapes so that everything I see here is white is completely knocked out without having to go in deeply layered into all the magic and BS I've done to create this illusion and sit there and knock out this feather from this one, this feather from this one, this feather from this one. Instead of doing that, it should take me forever and I'm not sure I'd get good quality results because I've also done some manual masking of some of the shape garbage that shows up when you use custom brushes. So how can I just quickly say, hey Illustrator, just flatten this thing out, knock these strokes out, and just be done with it. I tried a lot of different options, and I'm, by the way, doing this in Illustrator CS3 because um, I can't afford that cloud business, so this is what I'm using. But I understand the techniques should be pretty similar regardless. Um, I ended up trying to do different things with expanding appearance and flattening transparency and then knocking the strokes out of shapes and all this stuff, and that just seemed like it was going to take way too long. So, as you can see, I have accomplished that, and here I've got my owl rebuilt out of what I wanted, which is a simple compound shape, and then I can put my background here and there and do that. So how have I how have I gotten from there to here quickly? This is very fast. First I'm going to copy the shape that I'm going to want to reduce and knock the strokes out of. Then it dawned on me that all I've got to do is rasterize this thing. And I know that's going to sound like a weird move to make here, but if I rasterize this thing at about 600 dpi, give it a nice white background and everything just like that, and say boom go I'm going to end up with an extremely detailed and accurate very high resolution I mean it looks like I'm still looking at vectors here I can get zoomed in pretty tight before I see pixels right and these shapes inside these shapes and everything are very clear very linear very easy to understand so then I realize all I gotta do is use the live trace and it might complain that it's a 600 dpi image but it's fine and they have a setting just for what I'm doing here in this case black and white logo So now it's done a live trace, and now I'm looking at a vector result. So I can go back in as tight as I want, and you see we have a nice, relatively clean vector result. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that, and then eliminate the white. Oops. Sometimes that can be tricky. Eliminate all the white. There we go. One of the things that I did notice, here's a caveat, by the way, and so now we've actually achieved exactly what we set out to do. We've knocked the strokes out of the shape. So as you see, if I put something behind it that is a neutral color, neutral color, you'll see that uh, there is no more white stroke on this owl. Now I can drop it in over all kinds of different backgrounds and use it like a stamp. I can cut this as vinyl. I can have it you know, laser etched or something like that. And this is a very usable finished product document. There are little detail things that might need to be cleaned up here and there, but it's so much less time consuming than if I'd sat here and tried to manually work out the layers and the orders of all the shapes. So I got to there. Now here's a little detail cleaning note, is if you put these side by side, there's something different about the way it anti-aliases strokes versus gaps. And you'll see this, so the effect is that it's a darker looking shape. To resolve that, I got a really good result, and I just want to show you these vectors too, by the way. Show you, this is not a bunch of point clutter. These are pretty clean shapes overall. There's not too much going on here. I'm not embarrassed to hand this off. You know, that looks like nice clean vectors, and any cleanup that needs to be done looks like it's going to be very, very easy to do. But in order to go ahead and add a little bit more white bias to this, uh, hold your comments there, I'm going to just do a quick little offset path. 
on a very, very small scale, something like that. Now, if I forgot to group my shapes, this might be a problem for me. But I did remember to group them. Oh, no. I did not remember to group them. So here's an important detail. Uh, you got to remember how to group up your shapes so that you don't get stuck where you have to individually pick out all the new outlines that you just made. This is a good time to showcase that caveat. And this is just how much I bring it in, just this little bitty much. And it has the same visual effect that the strokes did with the overriding bias there. So let's go ahead and just pull our inner shape. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to undo. So I got a little flummoxed there on exactly how you deal with the outlines that come after I do my offset path maneuver there. So here I am again with the clean vectors ready to go. And the shapes, as you can see, while they are the same, when you get zoomed out, the anti-aliasing makes this one appear lighter and this one appear darker. And my client is going to say something when they see that. So I need to make it have the exact same kind of weight. And all I gotta do is just increase this gap factor a little bit. The easiest way for me to do that is I'm just going to go in here, take all these shapes, and the very next important thing for me to do is going to be ungroup all the shapes. Now they're all ungrouped. Select them and make a compound path out of them. Now, when I do an offset path, I can take one of the offsets or the other and easily select them without getting stuck in shape hell. So I'm going to go Object, Path, Offset Path, and I'm going to take my inside shape, which is now completely grouped up because I did that nice compound path with it. And I can pull that out, and you're going to see that these two now appear the same. And you can fidget with it. You can take it a little bit more off, but I think this is a pretty good balance. So this looks the same. So here we've got our original messy lines that we had to start with, which is all this business. And instead of having to knock all that out, I just got this reduced to these lines, completely flattening the visual that I wanted while skipping a whole lot of rework. And I did this with a fairly complex shape. So again, I'm just going to repeat what you do. is You take your custom illustration, you rasterize it to about 600 dpi, you do live trace, and then if you need to worry about the bias of any kind of anti-aliasing from stroke versus gaps, all you got to do is just do a little offset path just to trim your shapes in just a little bit. All right, so that's the deal. That's how you quickly can visually reduce a shape that you're working from and knock out your strokes. Here's our result. Voila. All right, so that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks a lot.